Okay, so um, I'm going to, to explore how um, green finance taxonomies uh, can be seen as a way to implement environmental treaties. Um, definitions, um, uh, green finance taxonomies are classification schemes set in criteria for determining when an economic activity or asset or sector can be considered green. Um, the definition of green so obviously differs uh, according to taxonomies, but it generally amounts to saying that the activity contributes to a given environmental objective. What I'm going to try to, to defend um, in this presentation uh, is the idea that um, exactly like other uh, mechanisms designed by um, multilateral development banks, uh, for instance, safeguard, safeguard systems or the World Bank Inspection Panel, uh, green finance taxonomies can also be seen as a modality for implementing environmental treaties. Um, I will start by um, um, doing a sort of genealogy of green finance taxonomies or sort of little his small history of uh, green finance taxonomies to, to explain a bit better this uh, new object of study. Then I will try to see how um, uh, the, this uh, green finance taxonomies enable impl implementation of, of environmental treaties at the level of economic activities by designing specific um, criteria. And finally, I will see how the implementation of uh, these environmental treaties through these green taxonomies can be um, done uh, thanks to reducing climate transition risks. First, a um, couple of uh, elements on the genealogy of, of green taxonomies. So the, the first two um, uh, green finance taxonomies that I could find uh, are uh, actually um, uh, tools that were designed by the OECD and um, the IFC, the International Finance Corporation and uh, other multilateral development banks to track climate finance and not only climate finance but also a finance uh, dedicated to uh, fight against deforestation and fight against uh, um, the depletion of um, uh, biological biological diversity. So this is the Rio markers uh, at the, the first line. These these are a mark, um, a criteria to follow finance uh, um, deployed for uh, the Rio conventions. Uh, then this concept of uh, climate finance taxonomies was uh, reinterpreted by the Climate Bonds Initiative, which is an, a London-based NGO focusing on climate bonds, as its name uh, can tell, uh, and the uh, professional uh, banking organization called the International Capital Market Association, who, who both developed their own um, classification of green activities uh, for the purpose of the green bond market. The green bonds being debt titles uh, for which the proceed uh, is uh, allocated to an environmental uh, beneficial, beneficially, uh, beneficial activity. And then in the third um, time, um, the, this concept was um, um, implemented by national uh, regulators like the People's Bank of China uh, or uh, the EU uh, Technical Group on Sustainable Finance. So national uh, national institutions. Um, I, I'm going to focus on the the, one of the uh, taxonomies by Chinese um, authorities and the EU taxonomy. Let me just give an idea of their um, um, the characteristics uh, very simply, in a very simple, simple way. Um, so about their legal status, um, the the Chinese taxonomy is an administrative measure. Um, uh, issued by the People's Bank of China, whereas the EU taxonomy is just a report at the moment. It's an open standard. You can, if you want to label uh, a green bonds by this taxonomy, you can, uh, but it's not necessary. And it will become, uh, in the, uh, it should, uh, by the end of this year, a delegated act drafted by the Commission under the regulatory framework set by the taxonomy regulation, which reached, which reached um, a political agreement by the end of 2019 uh, between the European Parliament and the, e, uh, and the European Council. So about the scope of application, so one is mostly focused on the green bond markets, the other one uh, um, targets more broadly financial standards and reporting by financial market participants and large companies. 
And finally, about the structure of these taxonomies, um, both actually uh, are based on a national industrial classification, and both define criteria. Um, so it's a bit more complicated on the EU side, but it's the same principle. You have the example here um, with the just one criteria activity, one a criteria for one activity uh, regarding the Chinese uh, green taxonomy. Uh, so you can see all the, the here the, the categorization of uh, the economic categorization, the criteria um, runs to the national industry classification code, and then uh, the reference to uh, an international convention. Um, just to, to ex uh, explain very quickly how uh, environmental treaties are implemented uh, to economic activities through these green finance taxonomies. Um, you, you have, I would say there are three uh, different modalities through objectives of these taxonomies, through uh, criteria, uh, and through interpretation. So let me come back to uh, the objectives. Um, so I, I give here, an, um, as a first example, I would just go through examples because obviously these uh, taxonomies are extremely dense and, and sophisticated, so it won't be possible to explore everything, but um, uh, we, it's an example with the, the EU taxonomy. The Article 6 of the regulation um, states actually that an economic activity that uh, is recognized as having a substantial contribution to climate change mitigation, so one of the type of green activities, uh, has actually, is, uh, the definition of this activity is based on the objectives of uh, the uh, United Nations Framework Convention. The red words are uh, copy-paste from the Article 2 of the United Nations Convention on, on Climate Change, uh, and uh, obviously on the objectives of the Paris Agreement. Um, let me see if, I, yeah, um, uh, this is a bit different in the Chinese taxonomy um, since the, 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 this uh, taxonomy follows first um, the necessity to, to stick to national conditions. Nonetheless, uh, it has as an objective to, to facilitate international cooperation, green finance, and therefore uh, implements uh, international practices and international standards. Um, regarding criteria, um, international law is also international uh, treaties uh, um, uh, in, uh, are also implemented through uh, this uh, the criteria uh, applied to each activity. Uh, so this is an example uh, in the Chinese convention. There would be many examples as well in the EU convention in the in the EU uh, taxonomy. Um, regarding interpretation, um, the uh, EU uh, taxonomy regulation uh, states that for many um, of the activities defined as green inside the, the taxonomy, um, the, 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 the taxonomy should be interpreted uh, in line with uh, 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 environmental elements. Uh, so here, just an example with the Sendorf, Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction um, applic applicable to uh, adaptation activities. So one of the types of the green activities. Um, let me then uh, uh, reach my uh, last point. Uh, the idea that uh, climate transition risks can be also a conceptual tool um, to, um, uh, to uh, implement, uh, to, to show the implementation of international environmental treaties through green taxonomies. So the climate transition risks uh, uh, are defined as a financial risk related to transition to a lower carbon economy by opposition to risk related to the physical impacts of climate change. Um, so paradoxically, environmental treaties generate such transition risks. Just take uh, the Paris Agreement. Uh, if you um, follow the IPCC's estimate of a carbon budget that would uh, enable to reach to to um, to uh, respect the goal of the Paris Agreement, we could only exploit uh, between one-fifth and one-third of world's proven reserve of oil, gas, and coal. So you can imagine that the 
there is a huge transition risk for any company um, having businesses in oil and gas if we respect actually the, 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 the goal of the Paris Agreement. But actually translating this international, this vague international commitments down to the level of economic activities can reduce this climate transition risk. Uh, it's very clear, for instance, that uh, fossil fuel activities are not in green taxonomies with um, exception in the Chinese taxonomy. Uh, this uh, possibility to use um, the, the taxonomy as a way to reduce uh, transition risk has been uh, already um, um, taken into account by the European financial regulators. Um, this is uh, the Article uh, 501A of the proposal for amending the capital requirement regulation, um, which proposes to, to lower capital requirements applicable to certain types of projects that would uh, prove that they uh, contribute to one of the objectives of the EU green taxonomy. So consequence, lending to green activities would be less expensive. This is what is called the carbon shadow pricing, uh, which then could set um, a complement or an alternative to carbon markets, uh, which is um, then specifically important uh, given the that debt systems uh, are no, at the moment at the core of the response to the economic crisis provoked by the coronavirus. Thanks.